1025 you saw this Today we'll be talking about pulmonary hypertension and then on, uh, so today is what, Thursday, Saturday. Saturday we'll keep the revision. We'll be revising the entire respiratory system from first day to last. So chances are very high that it will be a bit of extended session, but we'll revise everything. much faster pace. University is tough. Tough means will get failed. <clears throat> Ignacy state. Now what you said is how should I survive? The first thing is We'll keep one session on this also. This is about how to study in medical. There is a pattern to study in medical. Means if it's not to insult those who are into say engineering or any other field. But for medical, there is a different study pattern as compared to whatever you study till 11, 12. Because you must have seen in engineering. First year, in fact, first semester, there are separate subjects. Once they are done, so bas khatam, fir uske baare mein kabhi kuch pucha nahi jayega. Then they move on to the next semester. In medical, it really doesn't matter. In physics and chemistry, ha, oh, they feel like that. But kuch nahi hota. Physics, chemistry, in fact, that's very easy. They don't show much, see, not for point one months. Dekho. There are two things to look at in any of the situation. One is the saw may say Pachas log fail ho Pachas pass ki to And amongst those Pachas there are three those who are on rank one rank rank why they are not here. So forget about those Pachas fail to so No, I won't, won't sound good. But I, we all are expert in giving excuses. Seriously. Malab, agar jo mein fail hua, to nahi, it was not my fault, it was teacher's fault. Agar jo mein pass hua, to boss mein ne kitni mein da. You know? Face it. Accept it. हाँ तो छह पास हुए ना बारह में से छह पास हुए ना तो यार छह पास हुए फिफ्टी परसेंट तो पास हुए तो यार छह में से कोई तो रैंक वन होगा वाह तू क्यों नहीं और शुड बी अवर डेली स्टडी टाइम इसके लिए फर्स्ट फॉर थ्री डेज स्टार्ट राइटिंग 
That means you should really know that out of the entire day, when is your energy level at its peak? When is it? When is it at its highest level? Say for example, रात को after after eight o'clock I don't feel like studying. मैं कुछ नहीं पढ़ता. I listen to music, meditation, this, that. बाकी सब चीजें वो कुछ market analysis, this, that. बस वो. I never study. But I know that the morning time that is my highest energy time. किसी का phone नहीं, किसी को नहीं, किसी को time नहीं. Use it simply selfishly for yours. मतलब बारह बजे तक that is your time. So same way you decide what is your highest level of energy. Don't never give that time to you. You should really know this is what is called as the circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythm. My student who stood Jenny, who stood All India Level One. Right. I told him to change his circadian rhythm. When the one month before the exam, this day exam is. His exam is at three o'clock. Now you are a person whose energy level is very good in the morning, and it drops at the, in the afternoon. So start modifying the sleeping hours in such a way that your morning starts at two o'clock. So one month before, so he was awake at four o'clock. 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 You need to modify these body clocks when the exam comes. You'll find that suddenly your performance goes skyrocket. This is what is called as the body hacks. They are called as the body hack. You can hack your body. You can hack your body so that it performs well. So when we talk about that, how to study every day? No change. No. Just say your routine. Just figure out what is your highest energy. But when When that is your highest energy level, don't waste this time in unnecessary watching the videos or कहीं पे वो movie movie किसी के साथ बात कुछ नहीं no WhatsApp nothing simply because that is gold. During that phase, whatever you have studied, you will be able to remember it so crisply, and you will be able to remember it for a very long time. Regarding the notes. So in the initial stages, right when we started our our journey of this training, on the first first or second session, we said about what's called as the super reading. Super reading. I really don't intend that everyone, any one of you, any one of you should cram the subject. Always understand the subject, and in understanding, you'll be remembering some keywords, some important keywords. You must have noticed. That the notes which we write, they all those notes, they are purely with the keywords. There is hardly a, there would be even one single long, full written sentence. Hardly there would be the sentence. And we try to use as as many shortcuts as possible. Sometimes we say 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 sign symptoms, but now when I know that you know sign symptoms very well, so as we'll be studying further and further, many times it will come like I S investigation of choice, right? This is I X D X is diagnosis. So that way, in your final MBBS, your notes would be with so many abbreviations, but you'll be super comfortable. So those notes they are only for you. So whenever we write like this in USML class, whenever I write write like this, this means that this was the question which was asked in previous exam. So every time we don't have to say, I just casually I just do this, and students know that this is important and it is for this particular purpose. <clears throat> Your notes should never be written in a very good way. Seriously, just a pulmonary hypertension. Today, I will say for example. Once we discuss that what is pulmonary arterial hypertension, so then we will start writing it as pa. Yes, pas. We will write it actually like this. So we know that that this is what. Diabetes mellitus, no one writes. Everyone writes like DM. Diabetes mellitus. Don't worry. Don't worry. Right. Don't worry. Chalo. Yes. We need to start our. 
this session. All right, so today's session is pulmonary hypertension and those who have joined just before few minutes. Next Saturday, that means day after tomorrow, right? That's what I was about to say. That next lecture, that is Saturday, will be starting with the revision. Starting means on that day, we'll be doing the full revision. Revision of respiratory system all the way from first lecture to last lecture and we'll be using the same notes, right? Same, same PDF. So, so that you are comfortable, you know that just what is coming out. Can we, can we keep a test of respiratory system? How many of you? Test. So, though yes, we are over here ninety. <laughs> ah, after revision, definitely after revision. Ah, after re revision. Very nice. Chalo, kam se kam at least 30, 30, 40 jitne aga yes. Ah, Purushri, that's what I am telling. That we'll be, we'll be revising. We'll be revising all the way from first chapter to last chapter. Again, I'm giving the clarification, the entire chapter, right? So, think it, let's take it this way. Saturday ko revision karein. Okay? So, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday ko we keep test. So, I think this much time would be sufficient. Ha ha, full matlab ye, this test, how I am telling is, I'm planning to conduct it the way it is a USMLE test, right? It would be, but बहुत tough नहीं होगी, but yes, you will get a pinch of it. यहाँ थोड़ा पढ़ा नहीं होता तो problem है. Ah, Sakshi, it would be a combination, right? Same MCQ भी होंगे, diagnosis भी होगा, in which the the diagnosis means it would be just fill in the blank. I won't be giving you any option, right? Exactly the way USMLE test is conducted. And there would be only X-ray and one or two symptoms, important symptoms, which will be giving you the hint that this could be the thing, right? And uh, a few of the, at least say, three will be the cases. Three cases, I think. Cases means you'll be saying that this is a patient of, uh, say, 52-year-old male smoking since 16 years. And having complaint of dyspnea which uh, since last 15 days, etc. etc. Right? And then he came for, for the emergency room because he was having cardiac, he was having not cardiac, he was having chest pain because that's what patient would be telling. On auscultation, you are hearing crackles on only on one side. This is the ECG, which is shown. But because we have not not done the ECG, no, so, uh, for ECG findings, I'll I'll tell you straight away that these are the ECG findings. And then Echocardio is done and that's how the whole test would be cut and the case would be given. <clears throat> what is your diagnosis or what would be the next step you will do? So that, that type of questions will be there. So it will be very interesting and how, how will it be conducted? Sally, it will be conducted in this way. Say the way we are studying right now. So on one full page, there would be like question one and the question would be given. Let's say if it is MCQ to the question and the option C, B, C, D. All you need to do is you have to just in your book, right? In your book, in your notebook, you have to write say question number one and my answer is B, right? On to the question number two. Question number two, let's say your answer is D. That way. Whenever it will be like write the diagnosis, so you have to write the full diagnosis that this is middle lobe collapse. So that you have to write middle lobe collapse. Right? So that way we'll complete 50 questions. I, I am planning to keep it for, ha, huh, you have to check it by yourself, right? Because it is like you are fighting with yourself. You don't want any comparison that who has got more marks in this one. Huh, later you can always disclose that I got this many marks or these were my errors. Because 50 questions will, will complete. After completion, we'll go back and we'll start discussing all the questions one by one by one. Right? 
so that is the point where you you say ki, yes this was correct or this was incorrect or whatever right. in case of any query you can straight away always ask ki, i wrote this is this correct or not but it would be a usml style exam right where there will be the combination of it. sometimes a sentence would be given right and you have to just complete that sentence so for example pneumocytes right so question my come like that pneumocyte type 2 can get converted to pneumocyte type 1 in case of and then you have to write in case of see their hamlets so pneumocyte 2 2 they can convert it to pneumocyte 1 so that there is there is so much of hamlet then there will be less oxygen capacity so they will be, they can be converted so that this is just an example but yes definitely you will enjoy the test enjoy it thoroughly so is tuesday okay right i am just setting it on tuesday to so day after tomorrow we will be going for revision on tuesday we will be having the test same timings but yes it can happen that we might roll on for more than 2 hours also because say 1 hour to will be the exam but 1 hour will be the exam नहीं जनरल फिजियोलॉजी अभी नहीं होगी विल बी फोकसिंग प्योरली प्योरली ऑन रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम वॉट वॉट एवर विल बी रिवाइजिंग डे आफ्टर टूमोरो हाँ जब सेम क्वेश्चन इज कमिंग अप सो इन जनरल मेंटली वी वोट बी टेकिंग द जनरल फिजियोलॉजी एट दिस पॉइंट जनरल फिजियोलॉजी के लिए अगेन विल सेट वन डे विल रिवाइज इट एंड फिर उसकी टेस्ट लेंगे बिकॉज फ्रॉम नेक्स्ट वेडनेसडे i am i am starting cardiology right ek dum must cardiology you will love it so so today's topic is pulmonary hypertension so very simple when we say pulmonary hypertension there are two two blood pressures which we have to deal so here is our heart This is the heart. This is the right side. So from here it goes to lungs, right, and from here it goes into the left side. So this much circuitry. Okay, on Tuesday it's twenty-four and on twenty-fourth and twenty-sixth, near city entrance for best. What timings are there? What will be the timings? Because I wish that the revision which we we conduct maximum students should come because we won't be able to revise it afterwards. Okay, we'll record it. ठीक है कोई बात नहीं आई आई रिकॉर्ड इट नो वरीज आई पर्सनली रिकॉर्ड इट एंड आई पुट इट इन टू अवर शेड फोल्डर सो ऑल ऑफ यू हा नो वरीज आई रिकॉर्ड इट जस्ट रिमाइंड मी ऑफ रिकॉर्डिंग ऑन दैट याद कराना वॉज इट हैपन्स लाइक आदत नहीं है मुझे रिकॉर्ड करना because i'll be recording it on my tablet but till bahar se i'll be just remind me of record but we'll do that so problem solved <laughs> so this is the circuit which this is the circuit which we are talking about right when we talk about yahan se leke yahan tak bus so all the way from here 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 this much is pulmonary system and from this portion when it goes to body and all the way up to this point that is your systemic circulation right so that is the systemic hypertension so what we measure right what we measure that is this so which is say that 120 by 80 mm of mercury this is systolic this is diastolic etc Yes, that that point will come. All this discussion that will come into cardiology. 
because heart plays a big role. But right now we are not talking. So we remove this. We'll be talking about our entire circuit will start from the right atrium all the way to right ventricle to now. So all the way to right ventricle right, to pulmonary artery to lung capillaries, right? Lung capillaries because they divide and then they unite to form the venules and then the veins. And this one would be the pulmonary vein, and that's it till it enters into the left atrium. So this one, this circuit is there. If there is increased blood pressure, increased pressure into this circuit, then it is called as the pulmonary hypertension. And how much? More than 20 millimeter of blood. That's it. Because in the initial stage, we said that the lungs, they are extremely delicate. <clears throat> Alveolus, they are very delicate. So that's the reason this is a low pressure system. Right. Basically, it is a low pressure system, and but if this pressure increases, it causes several problems, and that is the pulmonary hypertension. So, if pressure increases in pulmonary vein, then it is pulmonary hypertension. Well, it is into this entire circuit, pulmonary artery or pulmonary vein. Right. So, what question we have asked is very right. Right. We are dividing the pulmonary hypertension into two parts. Two parts. One, when there is increased pressure in pulmonary venous system. So, where is pulmonary venous system? It is over here. Correct. When there is increased pressure over here. This is totally different as compared to when there is increase, increased pressure into the pulmonary artery. Totally two different entities. Lakta hai pulmonary hypertension, but that's why this, this topic is so important. And this is one of the favorite topic for US. It's one of the many questions are there because they know that conceptually people will make mistakes. So here it is: pulmonary venous hypertension. And another one would be pulmonary arterial hypertension. So they both are completely different. That's right. Venus is oxygen. This is this is this part is where it is taking the oxygen, you know? and this part is where it is taking the carbon dioxide. In, in lungs, yes, oxygen. You are totally right. Right. So arterial would be deoxygenated, and venous will be oxygenated. Okay. Now comes the pulmonary. Here it would be the pressure. So we have to learn about the pressure system. So pulmonary venous hypertension is what we are starting with. After that, we will be discussing. So let's focus on pulmonary venous hypertension. This is when there is increased blood pressure. Now, this is the most confusing part. Huh? The next one line, in case of any query, any doubt, kuch bhi hai, immediately bol na. Increase blood pressure in pulmonary vein and artery. And artery. Don't know. Pulmonary arterial hypertension when there is increased blood pressure in pulmonary artery. And not pulmonary veins. This is the hallmark of it. Veins are unaffected. So let's see. We go back to same image and we'll see how it really works. First, let's talk about pulmonary venous hypertension. So here it is. The pressure is high over here, pulmonary veins. <clears throat> it can be high when the pressure in the left atrium is high. Right? Back pressure. When that thing can go high, because this one is the mitral valve. This mitral valve, there is mitral stenosis. <clears throat> one example. 
right? There are there will be several examples, several conditions coming up. But first, we are taking it easy, right? Here is the wall. There is mitral stenosis. When there is mitral stenosis, it will go back. The pressure in the left atrium would rise, right? Because it is unable to pass the blood easily from the left atrium to left ventricle. So pressure would rise. This pressure will backfire, right? So there would be the back pressure into the pulmonary vein. When there is back pressure into the pulmonary vein, so then there would be increased pressure into the lung capillaries. Correct. Lung capillaries. When the lungs are studded with blood, because that blood is not pushing, that's not getting moved into the left atrium. So there would be increased pressure into the pulmonary arteries. Here also. The entire game starts here. The culprit is what? Culprit is heart. So here, how we'll be writing is that there is increased blood pressure in pulmonary vein and pulmonary artery. And this is because of left heart failure right? when the entire left heart fails right? myocardial infarction right heart attack so and in in that heart attack we talked about that then the, this is the coronary this is the circumflex this is the left coronary artery and this is the left circumflex what if it's the obstruction in here so they both are septum is affected left ventricle is affected left atrium is affected, so that leads to entire left heart failure. In cardiology, we'll be discussing in detail about left heart failure with all the causes, signs, symptoms, all the congenital anomalies, everything. But the left heart failure, that is there. Right? So when that is there, that means the blood is not moving further. So left heart failure, this is one the commonest. The second, as we were talking about, the mitral stenosis. Mitral stenosis. The mitral wall which is between the left atrium and the left ventricle this is mitral wall when this mitral wall that is narrowed so then that will lead to increased pressure into the left atrial system and that will be backfiring into the entire respiratory system mitral stenosis in advanced cases as the pressure increases or in, in the congenital abnormalities right, this is what is called as the mitral regurgitation mitral regurgitation so in mitral regurgitation, what happens that if you can look at the wall, wall is like a ring, right? And these are called as the cusps. These are called as the cusps, right? They are like cups. Now over here, there would be the attachment of all those they are called as the corda tendini. Corda tendini, right? Corda. Corda means they are tendons, right? Cords, tendini. They are tendons, tendini. Now these are tough cords, they are not contracted, but over here there are muscles, these are the muscles. So when these muscles contract, and when these muscles contract, so then that valve will open, right? And when, when it will try to go back, right? So then they will just hold it, right? So that this valve is not flipping in opposite side. When the chhatri nahi this is the chhatri, right? So, so when we, when we say that this is, this is like that. So sometimes if there is bahut hawa ho to chhatri wo ulti ho jati hai, right? This is how it becomes ulti. This is regurgitation because in that case the blood will really trickle back from left ventricle into the left atrium. So in that case there is increased pool in the blood in the left atrium. Correct? Am I right? Let's see. Yahan pe, this is this is the regurgitation. So blood has gone up from left ventricle to left atrium. So now in left atrium, there is unnecessary, there is more blood. So it is finding it difficult to push. Right? So, so that is how this left atrium pressure will rise. So difference in stenosis and regurgitation is just the stenosis. Stenosis means narrowing. Right? Stenosis means narrowing. So the blood is getting accumulated into the left atrium. So we draw both the things over here. It is, here it is the heart. So this 
So when it is stenosis, when it is stenosis, so this this hole it is narrowed. So now the blood is over here. Blood is passing into the left ventricle to a very narrow. This is stenosis. Regurgitation. These are valves. They don't allow the backflow. But when the blood trickles back, papas pi jara. When the left atrium contracts, blood goes in this direction. When the left ventricle contracts, blood utta gaya. Papas. Because this valve is not functioning. Because these tendons, they are broken. Or these muscles, they are paralyzed. Maybe because of infarction that is affected. Or there could be the some some defect into the Purkinje fibers or there can be some defect into the uh, AV node, C node, to AV node, to bundle of hills, right? all these things will come. So because these are they are getting supplied, the nerves are supplying them and then they can the just contract. So then they will contract in the valve would open. This is all a very orchestra like very rhythmical. But when it is not happening, for some reason, right? It is allowing even the reverse blood. Blood is going from left ventricle to left atrium. This is called as the regurgitation. Regurgitation. Esophageal regurgitation. This is our esophagus. From here, this is our, our stomach, then the duodenum, etc. Over here, there is a valve. This is called as the pyloric. So this is called as the cardiac sphincter. It's called as the cardiac sphincter. Sphincter means what? Sphincter means wall, something which is narrow, right? But when this is not functioning properly, so then this food it will come back. Esophageal regurgitation. Right? So when things are going in the reverse direction, so over here the blood is going into this reverse direction. And that will lead to increased pressure into the left atrium because here more blood has come. So these are the major causes: left heart failure, mitral stenosis, and the mitral regurgitation. All these things they will lead to increase left atrial pressure. Right? Left atrial pressure. This is the key thing because it will backfire and it will lead to Increased pressure in pulmonary capillaries. Correct. Increased pressure into pulmonary capillaries. Because left atrial pressure increased, so it will increase pressure into pulmonary veins. Correct. Yahape. Yahape pressure bada. So then veins more pressure bada. When veins more bada, then it will go into the lungs. That pressure will go into the lungs. That's why there will be increased pressure into the pulmonary capillaries. Now you know that. When there is increased pressure into the pulmonary capillaries, what would happen? It will lead to, we have discussed this topic. What would happen? Because of this. What would happen? These are the vessels, pulmonary vessels. Now there is increased pressure over here. That's good. That's right. So, chalo, you said yes, that is excellent. Pulmonary edema. That's right. So it will lead to pulmonary edema. See how closely the things are associated. Ah, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's right, sir. Now everything is fine. Now all of you are answering correct. Fluid will actually enter into the alveoli. Right? That is what is called as when the fluid gets collected over here, it is called as a pulmonary edema. So this is a classical thing that in case when there is Pulmonary venous hypertension, patient will be coming up with dyspnea. Right? Dyspnea. Because then there is pulmonary edema. When there is pulmonary edema, gas exchange won't occur. Gas exchange won't occur, so it will 
lead to dyspnea. Right? Dyspnea is nothing but breathlessness. You know that. Right? So this is what will happen. This is a classical presentation. Now, this is a major thing because now when we'll talk about then now we'll talk about the transmitting. So now we'll talk about the pulmonary arterial hypertension. Right? So I'm putting a, this so that you know that so the symptom is breathless. Dyspnea is what a doctor tells, breathlessness is what a patient tells. Right? So it is same. Yeah. I'll write it down also. Dyspnea is breathlessness. Alright, so this was a typical picture of this. Now we talk about pulmonary arterial hypertension. From this point onward, we This is more important. And this thing is important. There would be, there in, in US Amelia question, it has come so many times. Whenever there is pulmonary edema, right? Pulmonary edema means fluid collection into the, into the alveoli. Think it like, I have done it, you have done it. I fruity pite, I have done it, I have done it, I have done it, I have done it, I have done Lungs will do the same thing. There is fluid. The air is coming and going, right? When air is going and coming, so it will it will burst like bubbles, right, over here. With every breath, right? Because you are breathing, that that patient is breathing into the fluid, right? So apne jo bud 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 karte hain, so the same thing that is medically called as the crackles, crackles. So in crackles. Then we'll be discussing medicine. So I do have the entire audio system. So where I'll I'll be able to generate every sound. So what you'll be hearing on stethoscope, I'll be able to show you that. See, this is what is called as the crackles. So there are crepitas, there are crackles because say fluid hai, transudate, transudate is water-like, so bur 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 bur, right? But what if if Let's say rasgulle ke chashni, right? Usse malab katori mein bhara, straw dal ke then you try to do it. So what would be the sound? But, right? It won't be bubbling like a fluid. It won't be bubbling like a water. Because it, its consistency is thicker. So that is called as the crapitus. They will bubble like what? So same for oil. Exactly. Good pollution. Right, same for oil. Oil hoga to be as oil to it is still thicker. You know? So jesse jesse thickness bharti jayegi, it would become difficult. So all these are sounds, various sounds, which you put on put on the chest and you listen with us with your stethoscope. Right? And then, then you come to know that what is really happening inside. So over here in pulmonary edema, you will hear crackles. Crackles on auscultation. Auscultation means whatever you hear from your status. And, and in clinics, if you have understood this now, you will be like a jadugar. You have put the thing and, and you say that this is pulmonary venous hypertension. Nothing to worry. Right? The main thing is we need to just go for the ECG. And they will say, Kare, isko ECG? But yes, you have heard the crackles. And you know that in case of pulmonary arterial hypertension, crackles will never happen. So you just put the stethoscope and the diagnosis. Right? So now let's understand what is pulmonary hypertension. To make it still more interesting, we are dividing it into two parts again. One, what is called as the primary, and second is what is called as the, the another one is called as the second. Primary is when the when there is organ itself is involved, something has happened inside the lungs. 
सेकेंडरी इज समथिंग हैज हैपन आउटसाइड और कहीं पे कुछ हुआ उसकी इफेक्ट यहां पर सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विथ द प्राइमरी फर्स्ट इन प्राइमरी द की वर्ड वुड बी इंट्रेंसिक इंट्रेंसिक मीन्स इन साइड इन साइड द लंग इंट्रेंसिक वास्क्यूलर वास्क्यूलर मीन्स वेसल्स ब्लड वेसल्स राइट चेंजेस मीन्स चेंजेस दिस इज अ की वर्ड इंट्रेंसिक वास्क्यूलर चेंजेस दोज हुआ गोइंग इन टू द जिम कई बार ये सुना देर इज देर इज अ लिक्विड अवेलेबल राइट लिक्विड फ्लूड सिरप के फॉर्म में इफ यू टेक दैट तो इट विल इंक्रीज हाँ प्रोटीन इज डिफरेंट प्रोटीन नहीं प्रोटीन ये दिस इज एनो नाइट्रस ऑक्साइड नाइट्रस ऑक्साइड एस्पेशली द एल कार्नेटीन सिट्रोलिन कार्नेटीन सिट्रोलिन सो दे आर यूज फॉर इंक्रीज एनो राइट फॉर इंक्रीज सोडियम नाइट्रेट नहीं Eno, Eno is carbon dioxide. Eno is not nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is Eno. In our body, lena mat. Don't don't take it. Yeah, I'll I'll explain that. So intrinsic vascular changes. There are some there are some things which are vasodilator. There are some things which are vasoconstrictor. Vessels are either dilated or vessels are constricted. so here this the primary there is pulmonary arterial hypertension it occurs because of the condition what is called as must have heard atherosclerosis arteries they become so that is called as the atherosclerosis atherosclerosis and major vessels etc here we are becoming very specific we are telling that this is called as arterio Arteriolosclerosis. Arteriolosclerosis. That means only the arterioles are affected. Arterioles means this is the artery which divides, 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 right? And then finally, it becomes arteriole. Arteriole. In in case of arteriole, there is just a single membrane, single layer of endothelial layer in that it goes. Then it is the last part of the artery. After that, <clears throat> they start combining. They become venule, and then many venules they make small veins. <coughs> Sorry, many small veins they make middle veins and then major vessel. So that's how it goes. Problem here we have an arterial sclerosis. So two things can happen. One, now all these these things they are not under our control. So that's why there are small vessels in every artery. In every artery, this is the artery. There will be a layer of smooth vessels, smooth vessels. So these vessels they are not under our control. So these vessels, when they become big, smooth muscle hypertrophy. Right? It is not at all a good thing. Why? When there is hypertrophy, hypertrophy means when those muscles they become big. When they big. They eat away the lumen. That lumen becomes small. That's the trouble. So smooth muscle, smooth muscle, hypertrophy. Now, why this thing should really occur? The reason is slightly complex, but it's easy. It's not that complex. Smooth muscle hypertrophy. So we need to understand that it will lead to decreased lumen size. Decrease human size because this one, this muscle when it grows, it it eats away that inside lumen. So the normal which was like this, it has become has become like this. The lumen size has decreased, and then there is one more thing which can be done. It is called as the There is layer which is called as the intima. Intima means last layer, last layer. So यहाँ पे है, यहाँ पे. This is called as the intima. Intima. So this intima thickening and fibrosis. 
the moment I write fibrosis, so you know that fibrosis means loss of elasticity. Itne aram se the vessels they were dilating when there was more blood and contracting when there was less blood. Now because now it is fibrous, so it has become rigid. So it becomes rigid. Now it is not expanding. That when the blood more blood comes, it is not expanding. It is not expanding. So what will you do? Increase pressure. You know? Previously there was one road in which there were 40 cars were passing. Now there are 80 cars, but the road is not getting expanded. So that means there will be traffic. But this is what really happened. These are the two things because they are occurring at an intrinsic level, deep into the lungs, right? Intrinsic vascular changes. So that will be. We'll see, look at the causes also why it should happen. First, understand the etiology. Right? So, this is what is happening. Then, there are two chemical changes. Two chemical changes. In our body, especially in lungs and brain and uh, kidney, right? but right now we are focusing on lungs. There are two substances, one is called as endothelium. endothelium. And second is nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide. Endothelium means don't think like that who is good, who is bad. There are functions. Endothelium is a vasoconstrictor. Constrictor. And nitrous oxide is vaso dilator. In this condition, what happens is there is increased level of endothelium and then there is decreased level of nitrous oxide. So, result will be what? Narrowed DNA, right? Because endothelium is a constrictor and you are increasing the dose of endothelium in all constriction work. Nitrous oxide, it's dilator. That is decreased. So, final result, there will be severe vasoconstriction. Correct? So, vasodilator effect decreased and vasoconstrictor decreased. So, this is what will really happen in this case. So far, all good. Any query, anything you want to ask? Now? Huh, you know, nitrous oxide is good. ये तो मैंने नाइट्रस ऑक्साइड जिम के लिए इसलिए बताया कि मेनी टाइम्स ये पता है जिम के अंदर दे से कह रहे बस ये बॉटल ले जाओ 2200 रुपए की बॉटल बट डोंट लुक एट द प्राइस राइट योर मसल्स वुड बी दिस एंड यू विल बी एबल ऑल दोस वेंस एंड एवरीथिंग विल बी वेरी प्रोमिनेंट दिस इज दिस इज लाइक द अमाउंट ऑफ नाइट्रस ऑक्साइड व्हिच इज रिक्वायर्ड व्हिच इज रिक्वायर्ड एट अ वेरी डीपर लेवल व्हाट वी कंज्यूम इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी मच Endothelium by because of muscle growth effect. Now, endothelium, endothelium ne ya, endothelium hai. Remember, this is endothelium. Endothelium to, these are the cells. Right? These are the cells. Constrictor is constructor ne, constrictor. Constriction means narrowing. Dilator means expansion. So when it is nitrous oxide, so vessel is like this, right, it will become like this, lumen will be increased, so nitrous oxide will do this and, and what this endothelium will do, endothelium will be doing this, right, this is what endothelium, right? endothelium is a simple, it is a vasoconstrictor, vessel is contracted and this is Nitrous oxide, it is a dilator. Dilator, simple as that. So now we see what are the causes. What can be the cause? One, now that's what I, I explained. Endothelium. Endothelium, they are the substance, they are the secretions, neurotransmitters. Okay, so what are the causes? This is idiopathic. One is what is called as the Why idiopathic? Idiopathic means this cause is not really known, but it is seen. 
So idiopathic is that just because of observation, so many typical things are found. This is seen in typical young adult female. Young adult female. And for this female, there is one specific gene. Right? This gene is called as the bumper gene. BMPR2 gene. This is a specific gene. The mutation of mutation means this gene has changed. Now you know it. Ha, huh, these are the causes of primary part. Yes. So this is this is a gene. Gene's function is what gene function is to control all proteins, protein synthesis. Right? Now this bumper gene, BMPR2, this is the name of the gene. It is its its function is very different. This is the full form is bone morphogenic, morphogenic protein receptor. There are two types, type 1, type 2, this is 2. So this bone morphogenic protein receptor, just understand what it does. It controls, it controls smooth muscle action. Smooth. Muscle, right? Smooth muscles are there. So it controls those smooth muscle proliferation. Proliferation is multiplication. If we speak, that they can rise. Control smooth muscle proliferation in check. So that's the feature of BMPR2. Simple words. What it will do? That if the BMPR2, the bumper 2, is not working. Because mutation may kya hua? In mutation, maybe because of some X-ray, right? Ha, it controls smooth muscles in it controls smooth muscles in everyone. The bumper gene is present in almost a, in, in every human. But in case of young adult female, if it is damaged, right? For that, we need to go into the genetics, autosomal recessive and dominant. So I'm not making it complicated at this point. But just just understand gene location, gene location genes, they are present in every cell. They are into specific chromosomes. So that's what I'm telling that don't worry about the which chromosome, which locus, right? This is this is all will come into genetics. But the point is, that's what I'm telling. Idiopathic is when when the cause is somewhere deep into the genetics. Right? When when it is now it has been seen. In young adult females, in which there is a problem in the bumper gene, it could be because of any of the reason. Maybe koi X-ray liya, koi CT scan hua, which family me se chalta aa raha hai. What is called is a familial, right? It is familial. This is typical. But huh? if if you ask history, then you find that mother ko bhi tha, daddy ko bhi tha, nani ko bhi tha. That's that's how it will be. So family history would be very important. But when this bumper 2 gene is affected, it is mutated, that means it is not working fine. So there would be, in simple words, no control, no control on proliferation. Proliferation. Proliferation means ekka do do ka cha cha ka art multiplication, right? Growth. There is no control of the growth of those smooth muscles. But there is no control over growth of smooth muscles. So normal case means. And the smooth muscles are just thin line, right? Now there is no control, so they are they are just multiplying, dun, 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 right? They, they are multiplying, and then when they are multiplying, so they decrease the lumen, right? Proliferation means growth. That's what I wrote, right? So the lumen would be decreased. Done, right? Of your problem, sure. And this thing is classically seen in pulmonary system, right? pulmonary artery. So this is one. The second, which is more common, we need to add pages. The second reason is 
द सेकंड रीजन इज मोर इंपॉर्टेंट ये फर्स्ट तो जेनेटिक्स में किसी ने पूछ लिया तो पूछ लिया एंड इवन इन केस इफ यू डोंट नो अबाउट द पापर टू नो वन विल थैंक यू बट अब जो रीजन है इफ यू डोंट नो दिस दे विल शूट यू इट इज कॉल एज द वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट कनेक्टिव टिश्यू डिसऑर्डर एंड दिस थिंग इज कॉल एज द स्क्लेरोडर्मा scleroderma there is sclerosis thickening of the skin right and this scleroderma this is a autoimmune disorder is a chronic autoimmune autoimmune disorder when we say autoimmune we have got our own immunity and that immunity is giving us the protection against bacteria virus and everything but what if if that immune system it starts working against our own cells that is what is called as an autoimmune disorder in that autoimmune disorder there are various disorder various different type of disorders in this particular autoimmune disorder that is scleroderma there is tightening there is tightening and hardening of the skin connective tissue muscles blood vessels internal organs so so the keyword is what there is tightening i'll i'll show you some very typical cases right tightening and hardening no it will this will lengthen our topic slightly but once you see this you'll always remember so those images they are such so tightening and hardening of of what one skin second connective tissue where are the connective tissues into the entire body which organs would be most commonly affected with organs on target they will be muscles right muscles sare muscles smooth muscle uh, heart muscles cardiac muscles and the skeletal muscles blood vessels that is what happens in this Right, what we saw that they can internal organs, internal organs may all be subadult. The vital organs, they are internal organs. They are kidneys, organs. They are like lungs, kidneys, liver. Then, so even spleen is also not involved, but it is at a later stage. But at least these are important. What would really happen? to see this thing against scleroderma right now we are talking about matlab apne kaha the we were talking about right so that you don't get disoriented we are still talking about primary pa primary pulmonary arterial hypertension in primary pulmonary hypertension in which the arterioles are affected in arterioles we saw that what happens that that muscles they become thicker so lumen is narrow one of the reason bumper to g a bumper to gene which is controlling that these these muscles should not grow too much they grow right because bumper gene is pro problematic so in that case the movement would be narrow second reason scleroderma right this is when the connective tissue disorder janm se ya this autoimmune system disease has occurred in that skin and connective tissue is affected so now we are talking about types of types of scleroderma one what is called as the localized scleroderma localized scleroderma and another one which is called as the systemic scleroderma naam se pata chal gaya hoga right systemic scleroderma so when we say scleroderma localized means on one it's at one place right that is called as a localized scleroderma it affects its its appearance is typical ek baar dekh liya you will never ever forget in your whole life and then i'll show you one case full case so it affects skin and just underlying tissue अंडरलाइन इसकी खासियत है 
it affects face and the limbs face and limbs these are the two target so target area is face face pe hamesha first and upper limb and or lower limb kai bar dono mein saath ho but upper limb lower limb they are affected in lower limb thighs are more affected in upper limb it is this this shoulder region right that is more affected the next comes the forearm but there there is more area right when there is more area so those tissues they break like any another thing there is it is called as the morphia remember it is called as the morphia morphia means all on skin there are all reddish patches right initially reddish patch reddish patches on skin In dermatology, you will find that ऐसे पेशल कभी आते ही नहीं बिकॉज वेन देर इज रेड रेडिश पैच ना मच्छर ने काट लिया हो राइट अथवा कुछ कुछ ये हो गया होगा राइट दूध लगाओ ये लगाओ वो लगाओ ऑल दो थिंग्स देन वेन दीज रेडिश पैचेस दे बिकम थिक एंड दे बिकम ओवेल शेप्ड एरिया राइट एंड प्रोमिनेंट ओवेल ओवल शेप्ड एरिया तब जाके पीपल रियलाइज के नहीं ये समथिंग रॉन्ग इन केस ऑफ फेस एंड अपर लिम इट इज कॉलेज लीनियर लीनियर मीन्स एक लाइन राइट लीनियर स्क्लेरोडर्मा नाउ ये चीजें अगर जो थोड़ी कॉम्प्लेक्स लगे क्या है वन इमेज this is linear scleroderma on face vertical skin defects all the way starting from here and it goes to ye to kam hai this is less but this is what is called as the linear scleroderma literal of course the defects they can be like this can you can you see this the this is thigh right and all the way right can you see a whole patch it happens because of i told you know, connective tissue disorder right connective tissue disorder so this is this is all the way this is classically seen in the thighs so that's what is called as the linear scleroderma typically forehead forehead and over here it is about lower limb but you you will find that lower limb or in the upper limb they are affected it is always in long axis ha face and lower limb. it is always in long axis that means this condition what appear like this yes, side wala hua to diagnosis will change this is longitudinal right it is into this direction it is into this direction okay long axis so remember this thing. okay coming back to this systemic scleroderma systemic scleroderma means in this organs are involved I'll show you in which age limit happens. I'll show you. I'll show you one case, so it will answer all these questions. That's why I'm just holding back. So systemic scleroderma. This is also a divided class. One what is called as the limited. Limited. In limited, there is skin thickening. There is skin thickening. But very. over here small arteries this is what really happens in that leads to pulmonary arterial hypertension see skin thickening 
but small arteries are involved so small arteries in small arteries those muscles are there and right? those muscles they become thick they become rigid and that will lead to typical pulmonary arterial hypertension so if someone asks that the primary cause primary cause is idiopathy and second another cause the scleroderma koi aisa aa gaya it will say ke what type of scleroderma without any hesitation it is the systemic scleroderma and in systemic scleroderma also it is limited one the person would say see this much this is because this is a deadly question of your son the options which will be given it will be localized scleroderma systemic scleroderma limited scleroderma and the diffuse scleroderma i'm i'm just coming to diffuse right so people find it difficult but this is that limited scleroderma means the localized may just ek jagah hua baki koi nahi organs are never involved right organs are totally normal right no involvement of organs ye khas yaad no organs involved no organs in this organs are involved but organs are not directly involved in this you see the effect since uh, over here it will lead to that path pulmonary artery hypertension right this now this one is this is easy to understand this is what is called as the diffuse we will not be going into much detail because diffuse scleroderma is is massive talk because over here is this is like widespread defects widespread defects the defects you find in your patient the skin right and then that skin thickening will be there and then it will be going on to all the organs all the organs means organs in world So in that case, the kidneys. When the kidneys are there, so then you find that the kidney structure it leads to hydronephrosis, and then lungs. Lungs they are also involved. Heart is involved. Heart is unable to pump. It leads to pericarditis. GIT is involved. Right, person gets severe constipation. All those things, right? So heart. That is will will be discussing. It is a full fledged topic which will be discussing in connective tissue disorders. But kidney, heart. Uh, uh, lungs, lungs, and GI. Right? These are the targets most commonly affected. Is localized scleroderma the organ center? In localized, the organs are not affected. I wrote it over. No organs in one. Right? In localized scleroderma, do remember it. In localized scleroderma, organs are not affected. No organs involved means. organs not in not affect organs are let me write this organs are not right sakshi is this clear organs are normal right so over here our target is that in case of pa that you don't worry at this point right we are not studying medicine because if we'll go into that detail right we'll go crazy this is such a talk right now or we are understanding we are understanding this is pulmonary hypertension right so this you remember that in systemic scleroderma in the limited edition right this pulmonary hypertension occurs right? because this the other name of this is systematic this uh, systemic sclerosis right that is other name so systemic sclerosis or the multiple sclerosis right that is also the name but when you go into that detail and the bit is like a topic of not less than 100 pages so all of them let the time come will be discussed because all of them they are individually a big topic GIT in multiple sclerosis, GIT in lungs, GIT that the heart in multiple sclerosis, kidney in multiple sclerosis. All of them. One more thing, which ideally should this, this would be a trump card. That is what is called as the sinus scleroderma. Sinus scleroderma, very rare. But I don't know if you have seen a picture of it. Sinus scleroderma is. 
इंटरनल ऑर्गन्स इन्वॉल्व सारे मेजर इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ दट बट बट स्किन इज नॉर्मल टोटली उल्टा वेरी रेयरली बट इफ इट अकर्स देन इट इज कॉल एज द so this is that instead of just telling you that it occurs in limited addition or the limited scleroderma i thought that let me give you some brief idea about that what is this scleroderma okay here is the the real case this is a case this is same patient on the way when she was 8 years old now you can see over here over here and even on the cheek you can see those atrophic growths right they are the atrophic growths because the problem is into the connective tissue so those connective tissues they start start contracting right so it happens now at the age of 15 years see what happened. this grew this portion of the skin it atrophied more see how prominent it became and it extended all the way up to this level this is what is what is called as the progressive progressive facial right and because it is occurring in the half of the face it is called as the hemi atrophy Still, nothing was done. Yeah, it it is hereditary. Can we say that it is hereditary? Condition was set. This is right. So sometimes see what happens. Now at the age of twenty years, now the patient has approached. This is so much so that can you see the difference between this eye and this eye? Something what is called as the periorbital fat. Right? Periorbital fat is when you touch your eyes, right, surrounding it, you will find that it is very soft, right, very delicate. This is the periorbital fat. Orbital fat. That is total loss of it. Loss of it. Left side. See. So. the entire left face is looking like as if it is just near bones see see the half of the face is normal and half of the face is like it is someone else's face and after one year the age of 21 years the surgery was done and this surgery is what is called as the fat and collagen transplantation so this is after fat some is collagen transplantation because it was in a localized case so nothing happened to any of the organs but this is this is how it can be identified so there so there be exactly fat loss yeah no. the fat fat has been see over here this is degenerated over here the fat has been transplanted taken from other parts of the body all right so sign symptoms of sign symptoms of this ph that would be dyspnea on mild exertion we now talk about the secondary pH all the way second pH pulmonary when it is secondary so this is due to totally different reasons which are not related to actually the arteries this is happening all due to hypoxemia hypoxemia means less oxygen 
oxygen is not reaching. So it could be because of common as this COPD, right? chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or this is a very common thing, obesity. When the person is so much of obese, and then it so much so it leads to hypo ventilation. Obesity hyperventilation. In obesity hyperventilation, due to extreme weight, right? Extreme weight, there is so much of fat deposition that person is unable to breathe properly. Now you know the concept. You know the concept of what's called as the chronic hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. You think it will be simple words. This is the alveoli. That's the blood vessel. Right? That's the blood vessel. It's the blood vessel. If there is less oxygen, if there is less oxygen, so then body will say, Pagala, you have blood kyo waste nikar. Right? Constrict it. Constrict. Right? Don't waste the blood unnecessarily. So whenever, if, if this, in this case, right, let's say, if this particular low is getting less oxygen, so definitely there will be less blood supply to that area. Right? Because the vessels, they will be constricted. It is because of the specific oxygen receptors. So they are not present, so immediately they will shrink. We don't want to waste the blood. Because if we send the blood over here, in any case, there is less oxygen, so then it won't be making any use of it. So this whole condition is called as hypoxic. Hypoxic means there is less oxygen, right? Pulmonary, because it happens only in pulmonary vessels, vasoconstriction. This is something which won't occur in case of system, right, in the tissues. And this is happening, let's say, long. So it has become chronic. Right? So in case of obesity, when the person is very thick, person is unable to breathe properly. When he is not breathing properly, so that area is getting less oxygen. Less oxygen, but immediately inside vessels, so they are all powerful. Right? They will say okay, no oxygen, blood should not be sent, they will constrict. When they constrict, right? when they constrict, what would happen? When they constrict, that means here there is increased pressure. Because previously the road was big, now it has narrowed, so there will be the pressure on the backside. So this means there is increased resistance, right? Increased vascular resistance. Now it is not easy to enter blood in pulmonary circulation. In pulmonary circulation. When this thing occurs, and there is increased pulmonary resistance, the vascular resistance. So blood, to, who is pushing the blood? This is the lung. But this lung is now showing attitude. Constricted. Constricted. So this particular vessel, this is what? This is pulmonary trunk. Pulmonary trunk will find it difficult to push the blood. Right? It's fine. Find, push the blood. So there will be increased pressure over. When the pressure is increased over here, so it will lead to increased pressure into the right pit. Right? This is the tricuspid valve. So the pressure will be mounted on tricuspid valve. Right? So this will expand because it has to work more. So increase vascular resistance because here there is vessels are narrowed. So there is increased right. This is ventricle, right? The right ventricle, ventricular stress. And because of that, there is the right ventricular, ventricular hypertrophy. Its wall will become thick. From now on, what is will be right as RVH, right ventricular hypertrophy. So this is what happens. When this thing happens, Finally, it will lead to failure. Heart would stop working or she dies. Or there, there will be several effects. This is one. Now, 
for the diagnosis, right? DX means diagnosis. We are going into that detail as if it is a medicine lecture, but could be good. In medicine, whenever it comes to diagnosis, it has to go under these four headings: inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. Inspection is you just don't touch the patient. Watch. Do you get anything? So that is what is called as the inspection. Right? Inspection. Then palpation. Right? You just touch and then you find out that is there anything. So you find that yeah, I'm happy there is pain. No, there is no pain. Here, when I press and I take my hand off, so then there is pain. That is called as a rebound film. Okay. Is there any edema? So you just press it and then you see that yes, it is called as the pitting edema. No, it has come back immediately, so it is non pitting pitting edema. One is because of right, right heart failure, second is because of severe infection. So that's how that is called as the palpation, percussion. Right? When we say that when, when the lung is collapsed, you try to percuss, we find that if the lung is collapsed, it is like there is there is no, it's a dull sound. <clears throat> when it is pneumothorax, it was resonance. So it right? will vibrate. So that will be resonance. And then the auscultation. So over here, in the diagnosis of this inspection, you will be watching the skin. And in skin, you will try to figure out is there any morphia? Right? Red patches, red or dark patches. What you saw, right? Dark patches, or is there any atrophy, right? Especially on the face and the limbs. So that is inspection. Now, this is one, one very typical image. This was in fact one of the questions. You can't do this thing in a normal way. Usually it is done after in the post-mortem, right? When the patient has died, and then you take the tissue sample and then you stain it and you watch it under the microscope. So you see this thing. The classical pattern that you see in this case is this one, right? I'm removing it now. See? These are the vessels, right? This is, in fact, not vessels, these are the blood, right? These are blood clots. So, vessels, they are like this, right? But then, this is your arteriole, right? But here, as if it has pulled out. So, yape, these are all smooth muscles, smooth muscles. So this entire structure what is looking like this. Right? Normally balloon is round, but when it is protruding on one side, so it is abnormal. This is what is called as the plexiform chips. Right? It is called as the plexiform chips. The questions Kistar said is not okay. They will say that this is a, in the case of a young adult female who is dyspneic on exertion, this thing has occurred since two weeks. And on lung biopsy, the following image has been seen. And uh, what's your diagnosis? So, this is what is called as the plexiform nodules or the plexiform lesions, which you see in case of pulmonary hypertension. So, this is one. So that is an inspection. On palpation, on palpation, you will be able to feed those oval areas, right? Thickened skin, thickened skin, and elevated oval regions. Marcation. It percussion is this tapping, right? Percussion. Now that depends upon when we'll be discussing the actual medicine, right? Because it would be as per organ involved. It can happen that once you go to go to clinics, 
someone would say that these things are not necessary nowadays. Straight away do the ultrasound, it's not necessary. Totally agree. Right? But this is one of that modality which can give you so many things. Because the patient is in ICU, right? The patient is in a bad condition. You can say that he has portable, call, call the radiologist, he'll come up with a portable machine, right? We'll do the ultrasound, all good. But some of the skills, if you develop, then your diagnosis will because you just do one tap and you say that this is something. Then when the investigations are done, they are just for the confirmation. So this is as per organ environment. When we'll be discussing the medicine, right, we'll talk more about it. But important is the auscultation. Auscultation. With the stethoscope, what you would try to hear, you will try to hear crackles. People would actually sometimes laugh at you. <clears throat> you see that patient is having those vertical streaks, and you take the stethoscope out and you start palpating. People will say, okay, what is he? What you are trying to do is <clears throat> that whether there is involvement of pulmonary edema or not. Correct? So the crackles, that means there is pulmonary edema. When there is pulmonary edema, pulmonary edema, so this is seen in pulmonary venous hypertension. It won't occur in PAR. So one so that means if the patient has developed any of those things, well, that is separate. It means it is definitely this patient, it can occur, right? What if, if it is patient is having on face a small streak, atrophic streak, and you feel like that this is a localized, localized scleroderma. But when you hear to the crackles and then there is pulmonary edema also, so that means you know that this is pulmonary venous hypertension with associated localized and it is not art. It can lead to later. It can lead to PA. Right? But at least at this stage, when the pulmonary edema is there, so that means we need to focus on pulmonary edema. So, no doubt, such so much complicated cases, they, they are not asked initially. It's very much at a later stage. But just the idea that what how the things are so closely associated. But another thing in auscultation, yet crackles fine. What I need to emphasize, and you must know, and you, you can easily understand it. What about the heart sounds? Right? Lub dub, lub dub. Right? So this is the right atrium, this is the right ventricle, this is left atrium, this is left ventricle. We say when you listen, lub dub. Right? Lub. So there would be mm, tap. This is dumb. Right? One sound which is vibrating sound. Second sound which is a very dull sound. So this is P1, P2. P1, P2. Lub, dump. Lub, dump. This is called as the first heart sound. First heart sound. First heart sound is because of this and this. Mitral and the tricuspid. So when these valves they close, then valves open, there is no sound. Right? When the valves close, so there is sound. So for the tricuspid and the mitral, first heart sound. Right? So that is love. When we have, from here it is the aorta. Right? So there is aortic valve. And this is the pulmonary trunk. Pulmonary trunk. So we have got the pulmonary valve. Pulmonary valve. This is aortic valve. First heart sound is normal, right? It is normal because nothing has really happened at this point to left atrium to, to, do, to these valves. But what about the P2? Because of the increased pressure over here. The pressure has increased over here. Kabhi gusse se darwaja ban kiya, jor se. Right? This is what really happens. 
the pulmonary valve the right? pulmonary valve will open right the blood will go but then when the blood will try to go back it is under high pressure so if you close the pulmonary valve with closed so there would be the loud peak so the how it will feel like lubbed up lubbed up that way. typically you will be able to hear that this is a sharp sound it is the loud p2 loud p2 it is occurring because of high pressure in pulmonary These are the findings which you now still there are more findings right those findings are like that uh, in case if if there is functional tricuspid aorta is normal na aorta ko kya hona aorta is totally normal and because if anything goes wrong to aorta it will lead to systemic hypertension wo to aap measure karo aapko pata chal right this is happening only in the pulmonary trunk so where would you would you really hear it to typical hear it that's the sternum right the sternum this is this is the sternum the heart is arranged like this correct right? heart is arranged like this right this is the heart you will see you will hear this thing at a sternal border right because this is a so this is this is how the arrangement so the the arrangement of the heart is it is not like the way we are drawing right this entire front area is right ventricle and from right ventricle it is going up so trunk it actually goes over here so that's the point that's the reason we hear this loud p2 at this point we'll see this thing in anatomy but abhi abhi itna tension because there is more thing is like what is called as a hollow systolic pulmonary hollow systolic means there is systole then there is diastole right diastole systolic means when the heart is contract during this phase right, because the the blood is going under pressure and it is going via tricuspid right so then we sound and then sigh right and then that thing would be mixed with lab tap right so this is normal p1 hollow systolic murmur and sharp p2 so that is how it the whole Expectation will form. I'll show you all these things on my cardiac cardiac cardio. So that we can be discussing. So this is what what we really get in this case for the investigation. You want to send the patient for investigation. What investigations would you like to do? Right. First thing we'll always do echo cardio. Echocardiogram means you are using the sound waves. It is like ultrasonogram, and in that you get RVH, right ventricular hypertrophy, right, right ventricular hypertrophy. Now you know the reason very well because of the pressure which has been mounted into the lungs that has given the back pressure right, to breathe. 2D, 3D, both are things are possible, but this is basically called as the echocardiogram. Right? Second important thing, you will be going for the ECG, and in ECG, I am just writing one sentence, but this is once again a long talk. Right? What is called as the right axis deviation. Which axis are we talking? This is the electrical axis. Electrical axis. is called as the electrical axis so here it is that's the heart when the right ventricle is enlarged the right ventricle has become bigger but when it is big that means there are more muscles more muscles means more current will be going so as per the einthoven triangle when we divide this entire thing into four quadrants this is 0 degree this is 90 degree this is 180 degree right and this is 270 degrees normal axis is somewhere over here but when there are more muscles so this axis would be shifted on to the right side so much so that it falls somewhere into this region again if there is massive enlargement it can go forward right so this is what is called as the right axis deviation 
right axis deviation. Now, there is one triangle, it is what is called as the Einthoven's triangle. Einthoven's triangle. And in Einthoven's triangle, we have to superimpose on it, and that is where our major leads, right? That is the AVR, augmented lead, EVL. EVF, lead 1, lead 2, lead 3. These are the 6 leads and then there are cardiac leads all the way from say 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. B1, B2, B3, B4, 5, 6. Even B7, B8. So they go all the way around the chest. Right? But at this point, because then there would be changes into AVR, AVL, AVF, 1, 2, 3, in all leads, there would be major changes. That would be a confirmation that there is a right axis deviation, right? But this is one thing. This is just understanding it, right? In cardiology, the complete ECG will come out. Now, don't worry about this quadrant part right now, right? Just understand that there is right axis deviation because there is so much of electronics in it. So don't stress much. You will be understanding it very fine once uh, we will discuss this cardiology. Actually the ECG because you need to understand the basic concept behind, behind it. That when the signal will come, when the signal will go. So we will take this full two days to be moving for the ECG. Okay, the fourth investigation which we will be doing is you pass a catheter, right? and that is this is very important. Right ventricular catheterization. So we pass a catheter, and when it reaches to the right ventricle, right, you try to measure the pressure, and you will find that there is increased pressure. In. So not only it is enlarged, but there is increased pressure on. So now you will you will try to do the management of the patient. One is systemic management, means the patient is breathless, fine. But then you start giving them the oxygen and the basic all the requirements. Fluid if it is less so than a body. But Main thing which are to be handled in these cases, we said that there is endothelium is more. Right? There was increase endothelium. Right? You remember this endothelium? Endothelium was what? Endothelium is vasoconstrictor. Vasoconstrictor. You need to stop this. Because if the vessels won't dilate, that's that's not going to help patient in any ways. After the kitabi oxygen we are. If the vessels are constricted, then that, that blood would be pulled on to some other places. So that's why this is to be checked. It's co control but man. The drug name is you need to give tablet Bozantan. It's called as the Bozantan. Bozantan will inhibit anything. If that is, in, is inhibited, so vasoconstriction will go away and that will be vasodilation. Patient will feel so much of common. So this will decrease the vasoconstriction. Second medicine which we need to And this is a very typical, it is called as the prostacyclines. Right? These are called as the prostacyclines. Now those males, right, those who are having erectile dysfunction, when, when there is erection is not proper. So such patients very crudely when it is said Vigra, right? Vigra. But being a medical student, the medicine which is the ingredient which is inside is sildenafil. Sildenafil. So sildenafil is a short acting. And in this case, in this case, this is of practical use. That is short acting. Just for two to two to four hours it acts. So it is of no use. There is another medicine which is called as the tadalafil. Now, if your patient is having erectile dysfunction, then the dose is 10 ml. But in this particular case, when there is pulmonary hypertension, the dose has to be increased to 20 ml. Right? 
right? And this is a long activity. And what it really does is it increases nitric oxide. It increases nitrous oxide. And that will lead to vasodilation. Vasodilation. In some of the movies, right, or or in the net, there is so much of kachra. Infertile male, no, that is totally different. Infertile male, that is that will understand. Infertile male, this is of no use because if the problem is into the seminiferous tubules, right, that that male itself will be having less of the male characteristics. So, for them. Any dose of terlafil is of no use. And another important thing what I was about to talk about is that in many of the movies or on, or on the internet, they show so much of kachra, so much of nonsense about the Vaigra, just to fool the people that it will do this and that. What really happens is because of the overdose, right? the normal dose which is 10 mg, is 20 mg is taken. Because it can lead to decrease in the pulmonary pressure. Now, this drug is not knowing. This drug, even if someone is having normal pressure, normal pulmonary pressure, pulmonary arterial pressure, and if he is taking this drug, then this pressure would fall. Can you understand that if this pressure falls, what can happen? Right? Straight away, when the pressure falls, it means lungs will cease to function. Lungs will cease to function because the pressure has dropped so much. Because the pressure has dropped, there will be insufficient oxygen gas exchange. And because this drug is taken for the sexual activity, immediately this person will lead to right ventricular failure right, and will die. So that's why it is said that never ever to experiment with any of the drugs without, without a proper conservation. One of my students, because I was teaching this thing, so he said, Sir, I tried and then this happened. He, said, he wrote it in so much of detail. And then, school, Kali, if I'm teaching you something, then it is not for Kichalo Iska experiment. Never play with your body. Simple. Bus. Forget, forget. Baki ka kuch yaad mat rakho, right? Learn scientific things. So this is the 20 mg telephone, which is for vasodilation. So that means before giving this medicine, all these investigations are to be done. Proper ECG, echocardio, right? Everything properly measured, and then accordingly the dose is to be adjusted. That how much nitrous oxide is needed so that his pulmonary, his and and what will be the indication? We have to auscultate so that crackles they are going up. So that's it for today. Do revise this topic with proper. Because this is one of the favorite topics for USMA. So many questions appear from this. Keep it. I put this file into our shared folder. Wish you all the best. No, no, I'll talk about it. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Right. See you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Ayush, I have already sent you the link. That is the link. Then you go. It is a Google Drive. All the files are present. All the files are present. Ah, yes, maybe. Oh, this was your first class. <laughs> so, in that case, so you should definitely attend next, that is day after tomorrow, Saturday. Where we'll be going for the full division. Because we started this, this is like our 15th class, it's almost since.
month, more than a month. More than a month we are, we are working on. We finished because today actually we finished the respiratory system. Before that we did the general physiology. I can understand. So next time you attend it, <laughs> because straight away to, to remember it, it will be. No, I am not recording any of the lectures. I am not recording live. Any of the lectures I am not recording. So we'll, don't worry, next Saturday we are going for full revision. We will be going for full revision. So don't worry. You will be able to understand. Send a mail to me. Send a mail to me on this address. I will send you a link that is where all the notes are there. And on Saturday, we will be doing the full revision. This is the email address. T I L L G U R M B B S at gmail.com. Till you are MBBS at gmail.com. Okay. All right. Thank you so much.